The eraser tool in Photoshop is not actually the best way to remove parts of your image. Instead, it's much better to use layer masks. I would never be able to create the kind of work that I do now in Photoshop had I not learnt about layer masks, and I'm really excited to share this powerful and professional tool with you all today. The problem with the eraser tool is that it's a destructive editing tool. So while there are temporary short-term ways to undo decisions you've made while using the eraser tool, any part of the image you erase with it is permanently deleted once enough time has passed. Layer masks, however, are non-destructive, so you can erase and restore parts of your image as many times as you like, with your original untouched image remaining safely protected at all times. You can come back to a file years later and completely restore any erased parts if you wish to. For this reason, layer masks are a wonderful tool for learners, and the tool of choice for professional Photoshop artists. But how do they work? In fundamental terms, a layer mask functions very much like a stencil does when working with traditional paint. So if you wanted to paint a circle on a wall, for example, you would first attach a stencil to the wall with a circle cut in the centre of that stencil. If you then spray painted the stencil, obviously the area of the wall which was open to the circle would be hit by the paint. Conversely, the parts of the wall covered by the solid parts of the stencil would be protected, leaving you with that perfect circle of paint on the wall. A layer mask that has been added to a layer very much looks like a stencil for that reason. This layer mask preview can be a little small for a demonstration, so to make it clearer exactly what's happening when we use a mask, I'll put an image that we wish to remove parts of on the left of the screen and an isolated, and enlarged, view of just the layer mask attached to it on the right. So a layer mask starts completely white, and that means that nothing is being masked. In essence, we currently have no stencil. To begin masking, we need to add darker shades to this mask to tell Photoshop exactly what we want to be masked out from our layer. If we were to grab a paintbrush in Photoshop and just start painting with black on our image, we usually just add black paint to it. However, since we have a layer mask, we can choose to click and therefore highlight that mask before we start painting. Now, instead of our paint being applied directly to our image, it is instead applied to our mask. Using pure black as our painting colour will mask out the image wherever we apply the black paint to the mask. Where the real magic of layer masks becomes clear is in how we rectify mistakes. Where painting with black erased our image, Painting with white on the highlighted layer mask will instead restore those parts of the image again. If I wish to bring back this part of the image that I accidentally removed, I don't have to hope that I can still undo the mistake. I can simply switch my brush colour from black to white, which as we'll see shortly takes one keystroke, and then paint that part of the image back in. Photoshop looks at a layer mask in strictly mathematical terms. Any part of the mask which is completely white will make that corresponding part of the image 100% visible. Any part of the mask that is completely black will tell Photoshop those parts of the layer should be 0% visible, or invisible. Where this gets interesting is that any grey tones that you have on the mask will be taken to mean different levels of opacity are needed, depending on how light or dark those grey tones are. This is how we can add partial levels of transparency to parts of a layer using a layer mask. We can see here that I used grey paint on our layer mask to make this part of the mask see-through, partially revealing the layer beneath it. So let's summarise all of that in tutorial form, and then afterwards we'll cover some very powerful and time-saving tips and tricks. To be able to erase using a layer mask, we first need to add a layer mask to our image. We can do that by clicking this Add a Mask button in the bottom right. Having pressed it, we now have this white square on our layer panel, representing the layer mask we just added. The layer mask is now attached to our layer. Changes to it will directly influence the layer it is attached to, but the layer mask itself will not be a visible part of our image file. So to mask out parts of our image, we can simply select our brush tool from the left hand side, or by pressing the B key. We then set our paint colour to black, and select our layer mask to highlight it. When we paint on our image with black, with our mask highlighted, we see that parts of our image begin to be masked from our view. We can also see that our layer mask white square from earlier now has black marks on it representing where we painted on our image. 
If we instead paint with white on our highlighted layer mask, any parts of the image which we previously removed via masking will become visible again. 100% white and 100% black will make parts of the image completely visible or invisible. For partial visibility, we can paint with grey tones, the darker greys making the image less visible than the lighter greys do. In terms of the most basic functionality of masks, that's really all the essentials covered. It's worth remembering that you have to click on the layer mask to highlight it when you want to use it. And of course, click instead on your layer icon when you want to use tools on your image itself and not on the mask. Now, with the basics covered, layer masks are already a huge improvement on the eraser tool, but with the following time-saving shortcuts and more advanced features, masks become truly outstanding. So with the paintbrush selected, you can right-click with your mouse to bring up controls for both the brush size and brush hardness. However, there is actually a way of controlling both of these values in a more tactile way. To do this on a PC, you hold down both the Alt key and right-click on the mouse. While holding those, if you move the mouse horizontally, your brush size will increase or decrease, and if you move the mouse vertically, your brush hardness will be increased or decreased. You can make adjustments to both size and hardness of brush before you release those clicks. On a Mac, you can do the same thing, but you have to hold down the Option and Control keys instead of Alt and right click. You can also change your brush size using keyboard controls, using open and close bracket keys to increase or decrease brush size. You can also hold down the Shift key in combination with those bracket keys to change the brush hardness instead. In terms of controlling your paint selection via shortcuts, you can press the X key to shift between the selected foreground and background colour, in this case black and white. If these colour swatches are not black and white for you, you can use the D key to reset the foreground and background colours to black and white. To fill the layer mask entirely with the currently selected foreground colour, hold down the Alt key and press Backspace on Windows, or the Option key and Delete key on a Mac. If you want to invert a mask, that is make the black parts of the mask white and the white parts black, you can do so by holding down the control, or on a Mac, command key and pressing the I key with your mask selected. If you want to see a mask by itself, you can hold down the Alt or Option key and left click on the mask, then Alt or Option click on the mask again to return to the regular view. You can also deactivate a mask by holding down the Shift key and clicking on the mask, and when you're finished, shift clicking a second time on the mask to reactivate it. If you want to apply an existing mask to another layer, you can hold down the Alt or Option key and use your mouse to left click and drag the mask to a new layer, creating a duplicate copy of the mask in the process. If you simply want to move a mask without copying it, click and drag it without holding down any keys. It's always useful to generally remember that you can apply both filters and adjustments to a highlighted mask without also applying them to your image layer, an example being types of blur effects. Applying a blur effect, such as Gaussian blur, to a highlighted mask will blur your mask but not the image layer attached to it. Doing this can allow you to soften the edges of a mask. You can also use the dedicated blur tool if you only want to soften small parts of your mask. Using the smudge tool will allow you to push around your mask as if it were wet paint. You can apply adjustments that will alter your shades of black and white on a mask, such as brightness and contrast, without making changes to your image layer's brightness or contrast. Finally, selections in Photoshop are an incredibly powerful way of isolating parts of your image, and they can also be converted into layer masks. This video won't be a dedicated tutorial for selections in Photoshop, but I will quickly demonstrate just how useful they can be when working with masks. We can start by making a selection using one of Photoshop's many selection tools. In this case, we'll use the double-click, amazingly powerful object selection tool. If the object selection tool isn't immediately visible, remember that you can hold down your left mouse button on a tool to bring up additional related options. With our image selected, which these marching ants demonstrate, we have two ways of converting it to a mask. We can simply choose to add a mask to our image with our Add a Mask button, and the selected part of the image will be converted from a selection to a mask. To gain more control over our potential mask, we can instead choose this option at the top of the screen while we have an active selection, Select and Mask. We can also enter Select and Mask with these shortcuts, 
Control and Alt and R on Windows, or Command and Option and R on a Mac. Now this also isn't a full Select and Mask tutorial, but you can use these sliders to change aspects of your selection, so we can do things such as alter how soft our selected edges are with the Feather slider, and change where our selection edge is with Shift Edge, and the potential changes will be visible in our preview here. For our masking purposes, the most important choice is down at the bottom of Select and Mask. In our Output 2 menu, we have various output options to select from, although in terms of masking, we can select to output our altered selection to either a layer mask, a new layer with layer mask, or even a new document with layer mask. Selecting layer mask for now will allow us to simply add our carefully tweaked mask to our layer. While selections can be converted to masks, it's also possible to convert masks to selections. We can do that by holding down either the control or command key and left clicking on our mask. We can also invert selections by holding down control and shift and I, or command and shift and I on a Mac, and if at any point you want to deactivate a selection, press control and D or command and D. So that was layer masks. Please let me know if you found this video helpful. I've got a lot of other tutorials on this channel, along with videos about historical photographs, so please consider checking them out. Thanks for watching.